Next on AM 1480 WLEA, The Amy McManus Show. Good morning. Welcome to The Amy McManus Show on AM 1480 WLEA. We're going to try to do things a little more casual today. We're hoping you'll call in. Uh, we're taking your phone calls at 324-1480 if you want to talk about uh, current events, local, state, national, cultural. Just uh, don't ask me about uh, John and Kate Plus 8 or anything like that because I don't do anything like that. Um, this morning, I, I do want to start with uh, the big Albany uh, legislative emergency session that they had. Um, everybody made a big uh, habu about it. Uh, Patterson called it a critical session, and they were going to come in and take care of all of these major budget issues. And um, basically, almost nothing happened at this, this emergency session on November 10th. Uh, they had a couple of minor resolutions, uh, something about uh, some property tax issue and closing a, a loophole in sentence, sentencing laws. And, of course, that, uh, that whole uh, gay marriage issue never came to the table. Uh, so, we again, we have uh, hundreds of thousands of people leaving the state year by year, um, and they call this great meeting, and neither Republicans nor Democrats nor the governor uh, could do anything substantive to, to solve New York's problems. Uh, Republican Assemblyman Dan Burling said, For the legislature to adjourn without taking action is simply inexcusable. Politicians love to punt, but the time for avoiding responsibility has come to an end. With billions in state payments for school aid, star property tax relief, and aid to, to municipalities fast approaching, we cannot tell schools, local governments, and property owners that they must go without, without those expected payments. So Republicans do seem to be a little bit upset, uh, but we'll see if they can come together next week or later and, uh, and fix these issues. We do have a call. No, we don't. Oh, that's what it said on the board. <laughs> Also, uh, we had, this comes from CNS News, um, all those amendments that they tried to pass for the health care bill, the House Rules Committee, had all these amendments that they tried to, to throw in onto the health care bill. And 11 of those amendments would have required members of Congress and other government officials to be enrolled in the same federal insurance plan proposed for the American people. And of course, those amendments fail. So if this health care package is so great, is so wonderful, why are our own representatives refusing, refusing to take part in it? Uh, Howard McKeon of California said, if Congress forces our constituents into a public option plan over time, then members of Congress should be expected to do the same. Democrats are voting down all of these amendments, and it is apparent that when Democrats are afraid of being put on a government-run health care program, that fear does not extend to other Americans and the welfare of their own constituents. Also on, uh, on health care this past week, I, I saw a, a, a clip of, of Nancy Pelosi um, I believe it was a reporter asking her specifically about uh, something in, in this health care bill where if you do not buy health insurance, I've mentioned that there's that 2.5% that uh, tax on your gross income, but there also is a provision in there that if you don't pay that fee, you will go to jail. Um, and she was asked, Congresswoman, are you saying that you will go to jail if you do not buy health insurance. She refused to answer the question. She kept going on and on about this is a wonderful plan, and, uh, but she did end with saying that uh, it was just and right, the overall plan. So apparently uh, those representatives who have voted for this have no problem with sending people to jail for not buying into any insurance program. Um, also on, on health care, speaking of health care as far as waste, uh, Citizens Against Government Waste came out with a report uh, about the stimulus bill, and they have a list of all these gigantic projects uh, that are unsavory, at least. Um, and some of them have things to do with straightening headstones in cemeteries, freezing fish sperm, cleaning bird droppings from buildings. Um, these are from, again, the Recovery Act. Also, they have uh, Malcolm McIver, a neurobiology and engineering professor at Northwestern University, who got $1.25 million to use electric fish from the Amazon and study how animals take in sensory information. That's your tax dollar. Also, the Lincoln Center in New York City 
is going to bring in jazz musician Pablo Aslan for a tango salon. And also the stimulus saved the jobs of three actors in Chicago's Shakespeare Theater performance of Richard III. And also they saved um, the designer, his job, of the Cezanne exhibit in Montclair Art Museum in New Jersey. Nearby at the Paper Mill Playhouse, the city-owned theater was able to add six new preview performances of The Little House on the Prairie, the musical, which will be starring Melissa Gilbert. So your tax dollars are keeping little Laura Ingalls' job intact. Mark Jones said that that grant had an enormous effect because many of the four to 5,000 people who saw the performances also went out to dinner and got their hair done and stimulated the local economy. That's great. Northeastern Oklahoma Community Health Centers opened a new clinic with recovery funds. But here's the kicker. This is what they used the, the money for, a snow cone and cotton candy machine for their open house picnics. The chief executive of the health center said the machine was paid for with private donations, but it was listed in the stimulus report. And he says, well, it's because it came from the same bank account. This machine, along with hamburgers, hot dogs, and balloons, is going to be used to, to market the clinic. No money for, you know, things like drugs or medical devices or x-ray machines, but for uh, hot dog and snow cone machines. Also, uh, this week, we had a, everybody talking about uh, this psychiatrist, um, the shooter Hassan at Fort Hood. Um, and it's becoming very clear that a lot of people, if not anyone who'd ever come in contact with him, knew that he had this jihadist view and and basically did nothing. So we have uh, political correctness pretty much the cause of the deaths of these 13 people and 30 injured. Um, he has classmates, he has teachers, he has professors, he had uh, uh, people above him all complaining for, for many years. The CIA, there was a report that from one intelligence officer that they had their eye on him. So at what point does having your eye on someone for their jihadist views turn into, you know what, he, this guy's out, we're taking him out of the military. He cannot uh, defend the Constitution and he cannot protect uh, the United States from enemies within and without when obviously he himself is an enemy of the United States. Uh, Representative Pete Hoxter from Michigan also says that White House administration officials delayed briefing members of Congress about the alleged gunman and that red flags were all about the White House, but they were hiding it. He has linked President Obama's handling of Fort Hood to a chain of other GOP criticisms of the president, including the administration's treatment of detainees and an investigation into possible CIA abuse. He said, quote, it is political correctness that is making it unable for us to identify the real threat of homegrown terrorism. He says there are more Hassans in this country. He has called for the committee to invest a committee to investigate the incident. Also, Chairman Reyes uh, has declined. He's a Democrat from, from Texas on that committee. He wants to wait uh, for the FBI and Army investigation. You're listening to the Amy McManus Show on AM 1480 WLEA. Before 80 WLEA. Hello, it's Joe. How you doing, Joe? I'm good. I'm wondering if um, if you had noticed the paper yesterday about Artport School and the um, H1N1 vaccine. I did. Um, I did read that. It was very interesting. What, um, what are your yeah. thoughts? Well, I'm just wondering what um, he was worried about parental involvement. Yet, when I um, I have a child that goes to Hornell School and one that goes to Artport School, and the Stewart County sent paperwork um, to me in, in Hornell for my daughter. It goes to Hornell, 